Hi folks, it's Rob from the Bush and Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing a second tutorial on how to paint faces. Now it is a slightly different skin tone, but the same principles are applied, so we'll get straight to it. So the first colour that we're going to use on this one is Vallejo Flat Flesh in the Old Flames of War range. Now it's quite a pale flesh colour, but it's a very different tone to the flesh base that we used last time. So I'll be using this and a different shade to bring out a different skin tone at the end. And my plan is to do a fair few different videos of loads of different shades that you can do. There's a huge variety of skin colours. So I'll get a few of these dotted out over the next few weeks. Now as always, if you've finished off painting the layer of skin tone, you've got a few streaks, just go over and give it a second coating. like so. Next we're going to do a very quick layer and we're just going to use Citadel Seraphim Sepia. Going to give it a coating of that to bring out all the details. If you get any excess shade built up in the eyes, you can always use the tip of your brush to take that off. Now we're returning to the flat flesh once more. I'm going to build up to the first layer of the skin tone. Now you want to be painting the face with this tone so that you're leaving the shade in the recesses, but you are picking out most of the areas of the skin. I think probably the end result here, I do leave a little bit too much shade showing around the top of the nose, where the cheeks join the nose. But it is, again, entirely personal preference how you want to do the faces. It's always worth remembering which parts of the face stand out on the miniature so where it catches the light more as well. So you have some shade around the cheeks area if the cheeks are sunken in a little bit or underneath the lips, under the nose and around the eyes. Just adjusting the light there because it was looking a little bit glary on the screen when I was recording. But watching it back now, it wasn't actually that glary. Now the miniature that I'm painting here is one of the Frostgrave soldiers from the first 20 packs that they released. The Frostgrave game. And I bought a pack of spare heads, female heads, for just to add a bit of variety to the miniatures. But you can now get a pack of 20 Frostgrave female soldiers. It's the Soldiers 2 pack, which are also really good. I'm not too sure which company makes the spare heads, so if you recognise it, just shout out in the comments below so I can add that to the description. It's been a good year or two since I bought them, and I've absolutely no idea 
which company makes them. So you can see you're just adding this base layer back on, doing the cheeks and the top of the lip. And you've got the little bits on the forehead where I've tried to do a few little lines, just basic ones, because we'll be bringing them out with a thinner brush on the highlight later on. A little bit out of focus there with my fingers in, sorry about that. Now we've just had a little bit of Vallejo white to the flat flesh. We're just going to do the first layer of highlights to this. Now again, you want to be thinking about where the light's going to catch the miniature. So the tops of the cheeks, the areas that are going to be sort of sticking out more. The top lip, the bottom lip, the chin, the nose, the forehead and the brow. So you just want to be adding really small highlights to each of these areas. Also, where I've done the creases on the forehead, I'm going to be highlighting those as well. Now this is using the Army Painter Wargamer Character Brush to do this. These frost grave soldier packs that they sell are actually really, really good. I think for RPG miniatures and things like that, you can build your own. They've got loads and loads of different parts for them. So they are worth checking out if you're thinking of building up some uh, cheap plastic miniatures for your RPGs and things like that. They do cultists as well, which are equally as multi-part. Tons of different heads, equipment, that kind of thing. like so. Now I've added another little bit of white to the previous mix. We're going to do one more more extreme highlight to it. And this is going to be making a smaller highlight on the areas that you've just highlighted. So the very tip of the nose and the edge of the nostril, a little tiny highlight on the cheek there. Little tiny highlights on the brow. We can do when you're highlighting every now and again you'll see me stop and rotate it. And that's just me checking to see if I've managed to do everything or whether there's any areas that look like they should have a little bit more of a highlight to them. Like so. Now this section is just me adding a few little bits of the flat flesh in its base form just to areas around the side of the nose and just under the eye there where I hadn't quite caught one of the details, like one of the eyelids. So I'm just going over that to add a bit of colour to it so it's not just a highly shaded area. 
Now just moving on to pure Vallejo white. We're just going to do the eyes. As I always say, you're going to be dragging the brush tip from its starting point in a straight line. You don't want to be trying to poke the end of the brush onto the eye. Always go side to side, even if it means rotating the model to do it. Like so. Now I'm just going to use a tiny spot of Vallejo Black. Now to do the pupils. So done them, because they are very, very small, I'm just going to make a little bit of a bigger spot on each side. Just to make them stand out a little bit more. Nice close-up on my thumb there, well played. Like so. Next, we're just going to use a tiny little spot of Reichland Flesh Shade. We're going to use this on our lips. Now, it's a good colour to use for the lips, this, because it's got a brownish tinge, but also a little hint of red to it as well. So it makes the li lips look a bit more naturally coloured, like so. And finally, we're going to use a tiny little bit of Caraber Crimson for the nick to the side of her face that I made with the craft knife. That wasn't intentional. By painting that on there, that just makes it look a bit more natural as if she's got a bit of a wound. And that is the finished face. Thanks for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much.